Good evening, everyone, to our question and answer session for 539. I am um, happy that you all got the uh, last minute email with the Zoom link. I apologize for that. Um, so hopefully you all read that and understand that this is just a really open forum for you all to be able to ask any questions that you need to ask. And um, uh, so we can just kind of open this up to you all. You can either um, unmute yourself and ask a question. I'll do my best to answer it, or uh, I'll try to keep an eye on the uh, chat screen and we can, um, I'll answer anything you, you write in chat as well. So I will open the floor uh, to you all. Hey, Professor, this is uh, Stephen. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. good. About how long did you think uh, our presentation should be, our actual verbal presentation? So, I, like three yeah, the goal is uh, between 30 and 45 minutes because you're not going, if you remember from my post from last week, you're not going through um, the SWOT for, for all the A through M items. You're really um, just doing a key analysis. So what would, if you were being paid to do this project, what would you want to tell the CEO that were really the most critical elements uh, for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for, um, for their agency? So it really, once you do that and you do it thoroughly and you do it well, um, I've seen a number of the presentations and they really don't go, they've actually been kind of right at 45 minutes. So if you're going over 45 minutes, um, you're probably maybe going a little long in some places or maybe you're providing a 15 minute overview of the agency and you really, um, I'm sorry about my emails, you really don't need to, uh, you really don't need to be going into that much detail. but. Um, some just some examples because um, the really critical parts are you're providing an, an, an introduction like you did in your paper so it's an overview so tell me about the agency because I, I probably don't know anything about the agency that you're that you're analyzing so I need some kind of context I need to know who they are uh, who do they serve um, you know how big are they how many employees just sort of you know what are their kind of outline of their programs just sort of the general the general gist of, of who they are um, some agencies or some groups have um, played very short videos of um, for two to three um, you know minutes that may provide a really impactful um, kind of overview of the, of the agency and who they are and who they serve um, so you really can can kind of do this any way that really makes sense for you all um, so you do the introduction and then you're going to do your overall SWOT analysis with those key pieces and then you're going to end with a summary conclusion of kind of what are the most pressing issues um, so really the whole the whole thing in a way is kind of a, a of a summary um, so you really shouldn't be going more than about 45 minutes so with five people, that means five to seven plus minutes. Mm -hmm. with the people may be designated to do the introduction and the mm -hmm. conclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because it kind of works out because somebody, yeah, because you could have somebody do the strengths, somebody do the weaknesses, somebody do the opportunities, somebody do the threats, and then somebody do the intro and conclusion. And, and you know, I mean, it just, it really depends on how it shakes out, you know, whatever, whatever it makes sense for you all. So. We've been talking three to five minutes. That sounds like that'll be a little short. So it's, and I mean, I've got like 10 slides, 12 slides, 13 slides to talk about. So I'm not going to try to do it quite as concisely as I had originally thought I would. Yeah, the whole thing really is, I would say, you know, gear towards a, gear towards a synthesis. So if you're talking about strengths, then, you know, and, 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 um, well, and like one thing, some people, just depending on the agency, you, I don't want to say you could combine the opportunities and threats, but sometimes there's, they're kind of a double-edged sword. So an opportunity might also be a threat. So if you've just spent a couple of minutes talking about this opportunity, when you talk about it as a threat, you may not need to explain it in so much detail. So some of that will just kind of depending on how the the time shakes out or the number of slides and things like that. So I wouldn't be, the, the whole thing with this paper, I didn't, I, I really don't want to put a hard and fast, you know, timeline. If you start going into like an hour and 10 minutes, I may start, you know, <laughs> contemplating grade, but it's really, because it, re remember it's about being concise. It's about a synthesis. And also this is practice. This is an exercise for you all for the real world. And, and people just don't tend to want to, you know, 
you know, read a whole bunch of stuff or listen to something for very long. So it's about those really that, you know, those really key, you know, what is the cream that's rising to the top, essentially? What are those key elements? So, and so synthesizing those and making those really, really concise will be helpful. Yeah, you don't want to put them to sleep. No, no. As well as, uh, an example of what you're talking about is like expansion plans. I mean, expansion plans offer you economies of scale in terms of mm -hmm. growing your business, but at the same time, they, they come with risk. So that's a good example. They, they do. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense because that's, that's also could be a real opportunity. Or that may, it, you know, may be something that you would put in a strength of their kind of strategic plan. I mean, I've got groups with agencies that can't even get a hold of their strategic plan. So if your agency is like not only giving you their strategic plan, but they're telling you all about their expansion plan, then that may, you know, that, that may be something that's really relevant. So. Yeah, they, these folks, youth villages who we're working on, um, I mean, they have, I think, plans to go national and have and already in like almost a dozen states. So Yes, they do. And that can be, and there's a lot with that increased risk, there's going to be risk for um, threats in other states. Um, and, you know, because you've got different state legislatures, you've got different policy environments and all those different things. And, and then also you have mission drift. So, you know, anytime you grow really big, really fast, or if you grow in, a, in an unplannedful, un, uh, like if they don't have a logic model, for example, you know, if they're not really being um, uh, intentional about the way they grow, that, that could be kind of an internal weakness. Um, or a missed opportunity, kind of however you think about it. I think they are, but still growing extremely fast. Like you say, there's mission drift. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be, it's just a, a challenge to keep people, uh, you know, on track. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of stuff is, is, it's interesting. We had a presentation um, on Monday in the face-to-face -face class that had a very, it was a unique agency that they picked because it was nestled within a public housing project. And that public housing project is undergoing massive um, expansion. And so it was kind of like you needed to analyze the agency as its own, you know, its own kind of standalone thing because it was, it wasn't like a part of the housing project, but it was embedded within the housing project. So anything that happened within that, that neighborhood had a direct, it was like, you know, that, that organization was like the, or the, the neighborhood was the lifeblood of the organization. So if the neighborhood changed, that was really going to change what was happening with that agency. So we wound up having a, a real part of their SWAT had a lot to do with the neighborhood as opposed to just the agency. So it's, there's a lot of different things that um, just depending on, on, on who you're analyzing, you know, may make a big difference. So. Thank you. Good, good. Okay. I'm going to jump to the, uh, chat screen um so okay great question so we have a question about how immaculate should the final recording be are there ways to edit zoom videos or at least stop and start um i recommend th this is one of those things you know practice is helpful if you stumble over a word um you know that's fine think about it um you know you can really treat this i i recommend that that each group treat this as you were you know standing in front of me in a classroom so sometimes technology breaks down which is why i recommend that everybody practice <laughs> before you hit record y'all actually have a benefit of recording people who do it live they really just have that one shot and they just have to you know make it work um sometimes people uh, mid sentence, lose their train of thought, um, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're, you know, take a, take a breath, be gentle with yourselves. Um, I don't expect perfection from myself or anyone else. Um, but you know, I expect, I expect your best effort. And, um, and I think that, um, you know, as much as you can practice before you hit record will help with those kinds of things. Um, some people, some groups are having, I'm getting some emails about some technology issues, some connection issues. So they're a little bit concerned about being able to make this work. And especially my folks who are, are spread across different time zones. Um, so, you know, worse comes to worse, you know, you can record your, um, you know, PowerPoint has that function where you can hit record. And so I can sit there and, and go slide by slide and listen to the recording. Um, that really is not what the assignment's about. I would just like our Zoom sessions, I would love to see your smiling faces um, and, you know, be able to share screens. And so ideally, you will all be logged into your Zoom session at the same time, you will be recording it just like I record mine. And then you will just move from person to person and who's ever talking 
is usually on the screen. Um, and then you can hit share screen to show your PowerPoint and slide through and, and click through those slides. So you may want to make sure just practice a little bit so you understand, you know, when it, when is on the recording is a face being shown versus when is it um, being shown that it's a, um, you know, this, when are the slides being shown? Um, so that's the ideal situation. If you're really having um, time zone issues or other other sorts of technology issues you can um, each individual member can do their own recording at their own time and then submit me um, links with very very clear instructions uh, via email about you know which one's first which one's second which one's third and um, and I will take the time and I will go through you know each one of those um, but again this the zoom guides are, are your friend um, the OIT help desk is your friend and um, hopefully you can just find a time for you know about an hour where you all can can connect and, and collaborate in a meaningful way and if this were again this is school but if this was a real world scenario you know your your boss or your person paying your consulting fees would would really expect you all to be you know figuring this out and making this work and um, and and really pulling together and, and you know using the technology that's that's at your fingertips um, to communicate a real effective presentation. So that's the expectation. Um, but you know I'm also I strive to be a reasonable per reasonable person, and I understand that sometimes connection issues and time zone issues um, present problems, especially with you know most of you all working full time. So um, I'm trying to be. Um, uh, you know reasonable and not and not too strict um, however I you know I do expect you to submit kind of one recorded um, session so long-winded answer <laughs> um, okay I'm reading a next question from the chat uh, you're welcome Patrick okay a lot of our group had problems getting in touch with a person at our site we have been taking our information from the policy and procedure manual um, is that going to be a big problem? So um, many groups have had this issue to varying degrees. I mentioned one of my face-to-face -face groups um, just couldn't, they just did not want to share their strategic plan. Um, usually you shouldn't have problems getting the budget. If you have not gotten the budget, as I mentioned several, you know, like a month ago at this point, um, you know, I would have hoped that you would have let me know about that by now. It's going to be really hard for you to do a good job on this analysis if you don't have something as um, big as the as the overall budget because the financial analysis piece is is, um, is really critical um, so you know you all are not being paid to um, as far as I know to complete this analysis so sometimes you're not able to get a hold of an agency um, you're not able to get a lot of good information um, I had another group who they got a fabulous tour of the facility and then essentially no real helpful information and people kind of stopped returning phone calls and things like that. So I understand that that happens. Um, but I'm, I definitely am, co am concerned at this point if you're missing more than a few pieces. So if you feel, let me just try to answer your question really directly. If you feel you do not have, you know, um, enough information to complete an SWOT on let's say a majority of or certainly half <laughs> to a majority or even you know if you're missing more than like 10 to 15 or at the most I would say 20 percent of the A through M items I'm going to be pretty concerned because each one of those items is weighed um, equally one is not more important than the other um, so I would say email me immediately um, and let me know uh, that you don't if like if you're thinking that you are missing more than like five letters of those A through M's um, and uh, and let me know and, and we'll brainstorm and see if we can figure that out I just I hope you would it would have have emailed me um, before uh, and let me know that so we could have fixed that issue earlier or gotten you connected with a different agency okay um, there are many um, if you all are in Anastasia, which um, which state are you in? Are you in Tennessee or are you somewhere else? You're in Georgia. Do they have United Way in Georgia? There may be, um, 
we in Tennessee, we have United Way and they have this, uh, they have a website called givingmatters.org and they have profiles of every single nonprofit agency that they provide funding to. So in Georgia, and this goes for anybody else in another state that's not Tennessee, you may be able to find who some of their primary foundation funders are, like something like United Way, which are pretty much, I think they're everywhere. And so do a Google search and see if you can find um, a, a, a public profile like that. On givingmatters.org, um, they have, you can search the name of um, an agency. And this could be, maybe this is the National United Way that's doing it, I'm really not sure, but Giving Matters is their whole their whole thing. Um, so they had interest payments. Well, if it's a nonprofit and they receive money from United Way or another agency like that or another group uh, funder like that, they may have all of the information about the, the budgets for that agency or at least the breakdown of how they, um, you know, handle certain things. Um, so Anastasia, you maybe need to email me separately and let me know more information about, you know, what aspects of the budget that you're not getting. Um, so yeah, cause we're, we're getting really close to the deadline and I want to make sure that you all, um, that you all get what you need and things like insurance payments. You're never, you're never going to get that information because it's, um, it's considered proprietary. Um, because if you, because of how the, the contracts are, um, the provider rates are negotiated with the insurance companies, all of that information is very strictly private. So I wouldn't accept, expect them to give you that information, but I would expect them to, you know, be able to provide some level of an operating budget or some, you know, at least at a minimum, a breakdown of, you know, this is how much our, you know, we get this amount of money from insurance payments. We get this amount of money from, um, uh, you know, from foundation grants. We get this amount of money from, you know, state, you know, contracts we get, you know, so some kind of breakdown um, I would expect them to be able to give you. But again, some agencies, you know, may not be very transparent. So I would say, you know, do your best um, and, and email me if you're having intense issues like that and I'll help you, your group brainstorm about how to handle that. Good question. Okay. Any other questions not on chat? You know, I really, um, I've really enjoyed reading your previous um, assignments. I think, you know, a lot of you all are doing really, really well, and I will be getting your grades back. I know I keep saying that, but I, I promise you I'm working really, really hard um, to get them back to you uh, before this assignment is due so you can reflect on them as much as possible. Um, and know that I, you know, want you to do well. I expect you to do well, but I know that this is a really um, – a tricky assignment and, and because we've had another um, group project ahead of this one many of you all didn't have a chance to start until um, until a little later in the semester so um, I understand you may get some glitches and people may not at the agencies may not be able to give you the information that you need so if you really feel like you're you're struggling with not getting a huge amount of information just please email me um, you know tonight or at least hopefully first thing in the morning and um, give me some time to uh, help brainstorm with you all because I just, I would hate for you all to submit um, something that wasn't your best and, um, and also just, you know, help you, help you understand that, okay, maybe, cause I know a lot of you all are, are new to, to organizational management and kind of things like that. I can help, uh, help you understand. Well, no, they probably wouldn't give you this information and okay, that makes sense. So don't worry about that part. That's okay you know, and that kind of thing. And we can, um, you know, talk via Zoom or um, email or over the phone about um, some of that stuff. So what would be most helpful to me at this point is if you're feeling like you're lacking information or you have any other questions, um, just give me very specific um, detailed questions via email so that I can um, either write you back or say, okay, this is too much for email, let's schedule a call and I can be really flexible and available this weekend if needed or, or after hours to accommodate your work schedule. So um, just, you know, help me help you uh, and, uh, and we'll go from there. 
So I'll just pause um, for a few more minutes and see if there's any other questions. Hi, it's Anastasia again. So our nonprofit has two sections, a children's section and a um, therapist's office. The therapist's office is technically separate because it's no longer funded only for the children's home, which is, I think, why the budget thing is so confusing for everyone. Because when I asked them about budgeting, they were like, oh, well, we only get paid through the insurance companies. We don't actually use any of the funding for the children's home. Okay. So that's why I'm a little unsure about how to report it because I, I, I mean, I added it in my paper. Mm -hmm. But as of having a, you know, amount of money that we get funded from, you know, grants and public assistance and all that, I don't have it because they, we tried to focus only on the therapist section because we didn't want to have it be overwhelming. Oh, Okay. Is there a way, is it too, had you given me this question several weeks ago, I would have said, just flip it to the group home and eliminate the therapist section. Um, but right. it's, you know, just simply because it's like, it's more contained, the group home, it's like kind of, you know, A to Z, <laughs> you can, it's sort of, it's there. Um, you know, looking at just a therapist section is going to be a little bit harder, but I would say, you know, maybe that's just the, the part, um, I don't know, maybe can you, can you email me a little bit more information and we'll, and I'll try to help you kind of navigate what may be the best way. Do you feel like you have enough of all of the other yeah i think most of what we're missing is just the actual monetary this is the amount of money that they have every year the rest of it we got a manual from them um from the agency that covers even the children's home so we're using that information as well um but it's like of all their policies procedures how they deal with everything mm -hmm. including the mental health section as well as okay you know is the other part. So we have a lot of information okay. as far as I'm aware. A lot of our, um, a lot of my group, they all had emails, but none of the emails got responses. Mm. And even with me, because I worked, I did my internship there, even with me poking people and going, hey, did you respond? They still didn't respond. So that was part of the problem. But only about the financial piece? You got everything else? Um, I'm not positive. I know that, um, for the most part, I don't think we're missing more than five pieces. Like, okay. Okay. like you were saying earlier, I okay. don't think we're missing more than five. Okay. Okay. Why don't you shoot me an email with the pe check with your group members and shoot me an email with um, the sections that you think that you are missing. Cause some of them may relate to the others. Just so, just so you cover all your bases um, at this point, you know, it's not going to be really possible for you to start over and do a whole other agency. So, um, and you've asked, you've asked for the information and I think maybe instead of getting an actual line item budget for that, which is un mm -hmm. unfortunate, um, you know, if you could, if you could, cause part of this, the whole point is doing an analysis and, and just listing information is not analyzing it. That's listing it. That's describe. That's a, that's a, that's a description. So you're really wanting to do right. an analysis. So you're, you want to say, well, what is the impact on this overall agency for you know kind of kind of putting it in context so if they get insurance reimbursement for these therapeutic services what does that mean in the context of the overall operations of the program i mean of the entire agency so even be even if you don't have like a, a light item operating budget which unfortunately many people who operate on those reimbursement contracts don't really have um, so much, mm -hmm. or it's just harder for the program people to actually have, it's like a CFO or somebody has that. Um, so, but if you could paint the picture of that context and what the impact of that is, because it could be that, okay. you know, I, I think that's, I think that may just be the only way for you to, to work that part since you've made the decision to focus on just that one section, which is fine. It's fine to focus on one section within an organization, but you just need to explain it in a way that that, you know, makes sense. Yeah, and, and with the with the insurance thing, I know for 
you know, from being there that it's caused because we only get insurance and we don't get funding from any other sources mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. um, that it's caused a deficit and people right. have had to take pay cuts. So I can actually analyze it. It's just, I can't tell you. Then, then let's, okay. That, that, the budget is. that part, that's extremely helpful. So I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Just, oh, okay. just, yeah, just explain that, do your analysis, explain why you don't have that information. It's perfectly reasonable that you don't have that information because it's proprietary. So it'd be kind of weird if you okay. didn't. So, um, <laughs> so that being said, if you've been, then I think that should work. Okay. All right. But let me know what those other, other missing gaps are so we can make sure they're not too much. All right. I'll get with my group. Cause that was the only thing I was missing in the, okay. that I had to cover. Okay. But I'll get with my group and find out if they're missing anything that's really important. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, as I've said, um, please feel free to email me and um, that's always the fastest way to get a, in touch with me. And um, oh, one note about the APA. Um, I did post the, um, that resource today that one of your colleagues found um, that was super helpful on Purdue Owl. Many of you all have seen that, but it gets a little confusing about, well, what is a heading versus what is a subheading? And in this particular rubric, um, um, you know, the introduction is a heading, the SWOT analysis is a heading, and the conclusion is a heading, and then all the A through M's under the SWOT analysis, you can consider those subheadings. Um, and so that, that headings and seriation link that um, I, I sent that's posted under writing resources will hopefully help you figure out, you know, in APA format, how exactly do we um, have these headings? And um, please, please, please use those um, subheadings for the A through M. And, um, you know, that will be extremely, extremely helpful. Do not make me wonder if you have included a section. <laughs> um, and um, many folks um, have struggled in my face-to-face -face class. We have many conversations about formatting this report. Um, many reports have gotten very, very long, um, which is okay. Um, there's not a page limit, so I'm definitely not going to be, um, you know, taking off for that. But I, it's okay for you to use a table format for the SWOT analysis. It's okay for you to use a narrative format. And it's okay if you want to combine that. Um, some groups have decided to do uh, kind of in a table format under each of the A through M sections to do an SWOT, just bullet points. Um, and then if you have any citations or, or relevant whatever you need to put in the table, that's fine. And then underneath that, kind of synthesizing that and explaining, and kind of providing your analysis for that section and explaining, you know, why something is a strength or why something is um, a weakness. And so sometimes that helps frame, um, frame it a little better and make sure that you've answered all parts of the question and things like that. But if you want to use just a table, it should be a little more detailed because if you list something, remember that's a list, that's not an analysis. So you need to tell me why something is a strength and be providing those specific examples um, and evidence to support that conclusion. Um, and then, uh, so, but at the same time, it, it may also just be visually a lot easier um, it'll be from a comprehension standpoint, it will be really good. It'll help you synthesize, um, your, uh, for your, for your PowerPoint, for your presentation. So if you can look at those, uh, those tables or look at those bullet points for each, um, one, you can say, you know what, these are, you know, you know, C is really significant L you know, or, you know, um, D doesn't, isn't really that big of a deal. And so it can, you can kind of, go through and figure out what are those ones that you really want to highlight in your presentation. So um, hopefully that doesn't further confuse anybody, um, but just know that narrative, full narrative is okay. Just please use the subheadings. Full table is okay. Just make sure that you're really providing those, those supporting points. Um, and then some sort of combination um, mixture is, is fine too. The, the key here is just that it's clear. It's explicit. You're not making me wonder if you've, you know, left a section out and things like that. So, um, so that part's important. So any questions about that? Uh, it's a new idea.
Hey. Hi. Um, I'm just kind of clarifying what you just said and being very nitpicky and specific. Yes. But right. so the introduction, mm -hmm. do you want the word introduction as a heading? Sure, or overview or something, you know, something. I'm not going to get, okay. I'm not going to nitpick. And, I just let me okay. know that you answered that section in the rubric. <laughs> okay, and the second question is the, um, we were not planning on using the letters A point, B point. We that were. That's fine, uh, yes. Yeah, that's totally okay. fine. I just want to clarify. Yeah, because that's actually. Okay probably not APA, but it's, um, oh. make sure it's fine. I'm not going to, honestly, with this, I wasn't really explicit. So I'm not, I'm not going to, if you say a, that's fine. But if you say a, I'd really like for you to say a, and then do your subheading. Don't have just a point okay. as the subheading, like make it explicit. Okay. Um, and also the, um, do you want specifically the word analysis as a heading? Well, just having just go straight in social, political, economic trends. It's just from the, just, this is really nitpicky, but from an APA formatting standpoint, you can't have a subheading without a heading because a subheading is a sub of it. Okay. okay. So that's why okay. I said like you, you can use just kind of de facto, you can use, you know, SWOT or SWOT analysis or analysis um, okay. as your heading so that you can use A through M as um, subheadings. Okay. This would be a little weird to have the A through M as, as all headings. I got a good right. question on that. Me, so. Okay, good. I'm clear now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, good. Great questions. Any other questions? We got some mics open. All right, well, hopefully this has been helpful to you all. Um, you know, I'm here for you. I'm here to help. Um, let me know uh, if you have any other questions via email. And I really look forward to viewing your recordings. And, um, you know, I'll be getting these BGT grades uh, back, um, hopefully, as soon as possible, getting a few more out tonight. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions about those as well. But overall, I think y'all are doing great. Professor, I have another quick question. Okay. I noticed in uh, the grade section that there were a couple of papers that still aren't graded yet. Is that the case? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. I'm I'm good. I just want yeah. to make sure. Yeah, but everybody should, unless there was, I, I, I've already read all your leaderships. And that, like I said in that announcement a couple of weeks ago, if, you know, you can kind of assume you got an, an A. It'll probably range from 95 to 100 unless something was really off on um, uh, your something was just really, really off. And then, but that's, you know, maybe like, you know, one or two, that's not, you can assume, okay. like I said, you can assume you got to aim on that one. Very good. Thank you. Okay. All right, everybody have a good evening.